In this scene, the damsel, played by Speedy, will be pursued by the villainous Dick Dastardly, who is twirling his moustache and chasing him with a weapon. Oh, hello! Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Do not attempt to adjust your televisual set, or your YouTube you'll set, or whatever the hell you're watching on your phone, your hand, the big typewriter in the sky. I'm Bushker, and today we're going to be showing you the best of the best, the most fun you can have playing FPP, or uh, at least the most fun I had this week playing FPP. I had a really tough day at the office today. I really struggled to get across the line. I was playing uh, squads with some of the patron boys and girls. We had uh, Speedy and uh, No Grace. And uh, Wraith in there, and pretty good players, one and all, but we just couldn't get it done. We were having some real struggles with these boot camp drops, loot, and all kinds of stuff. So I went and uh, shot some hoops with Junior, came back, had some dinner, and then decided to give it one more good old college try, solo FPP, dropping the middle of boot camp. No mucking around, doing it the hard way, either getting it done or going home. And didn't we just have an absolutely thrill-a-minute ride? Uh, I'm going to run you through this. And I want you to watch till the end simply because the ending is an absolute jaw dropper. It's uh, right down to the wire. And it's it's one of those games where most of the people are, are real people. Uh, there's a few bots, but we do a, a bit of squad wiping and, and things happen all over the place. And what I'm going to do while this happens is explain to you some of the thought that's going through my mind as things are happening. So maybe you can pick up and get a little bit of uh, FPP justice. Now, you can see I'm running an over under here. The reason for that is I can't find a med kit. And there we go. We finally get a med kit. Happy days. But if you run an over-under, it's very good for breaking the desync issue. What happens in desync is obviously you and uh, your opponent are sending messages to the server. If your opponent's closer to the server, then he receives information first. However, you can play catch-up with desync. Do you see how much damage I took there? Even though it looked instantaneous on my screen. Um, you can play catch up with desync. So if you receive the messages second, but the shot that you send to the server while you're dying actually is a one shot monster kill. Like it can be done with the, an over under shotgun. It'll cancel out all the bad stuff. Uh, and they'll, they'll do all the shots and then they'll see all the blood splashes on their screen. And then the game will tell them they've died and you still got half your health like that there. Bear that in mind because that's going to come into uh, that's going to come up later. Don't worry about that. That will certainly come out later. Got two kills. Uh, both of them have been kind of interesting kills. One of them was very very tough downstairs, and then we did the right thing, uh, getting the desync monster, the over under out, um, and now we're rocking and rolling and looking for more activities. What I really like is some more meds, possibly a level three vest. All that'd be great. But while I've been canoodling in here, uh, everyone on the outside of boot camp, all those people you saw dropping, have absolutely smacked the living crap out of each other. And it's quietened right down. We're at that point in, in time where everyone that could kill someone at boot camp's done so, and now we're all just thinking, where to next? <laughs> now, I swap over the over-under for an S12K, an automatic shotgun. Um, that's lovely. Much of the same reasoning as the, uh, the over-under, but a lot better for squad wiping. And... There is definitely someone out here, right? Definitely someone out here. So I'm going to go chase this grub because I'm nothing if not an aggressive human being. Like, I can't help myself. This is how I love to play. Uh, and he's gone to the rooftop and we've totally circled back. I think of going to the S12K, but I just do a bit of free firing and rip one up and we get into the Japanese man uh, or Lady Chessie Laura and, uh, and rip and tear. Now, there is a lot of action going on down here to the northwest. I'm going to eyeball that. Now I switch to the M416 because I know I've got a four times scope and I can get a little bit of a look in here. I don't like staying on top for too long. And you're going to notice something that I do throughout this engagement uh, and all the engagements in fact is, there we go. Oh, I nearly knock him as he's, he's flying through the air. He's repositioning. I do a lot of repositioning. An awful lot. Changing angles of attack is absolutely super clutch and important. We're going to tap this bike out very, very quickly. And we don't muck around here. We are in this one for all the chocolate rations. I go for a molly. Um, I know that that guy in the yellow chicken suit is going to be reviving. That is too strong a throw. That's going to hit the actual back, but that's fine. That doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to thirst this bloke up and make sure his buddy comes around the corner. 
He tries to do some weird kind of combo drop shot. Uh, hit him first. The lobster suit man. Sorry, not chicken suit. And then jump in here. And I know his amigo is going to be coming from somewhere. So we'll just wait. I'm going to see if I can hear what he's doing. He's very close. Hear him come in the window. Yep, there he's in the window. Excellent stuff. Excellent, 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 excellent. Now I'm running the Barrel M762. It should come as no surprise to anyone who's watched the channel for any length of time that I like the Barrel M762. I am quite the fan of the Barrel M762. And it rarely lets me down. <laughs> but it didn't let me down there, that's for sure. And now we're taking a few moments. We've got seven kills. Uh, there's 59 left in the game and we're starting to adjust uh, our loadouts and move towards what we want as a final loadout. Now, this is pretty much where I'm at solo versus squad. I'm very happy with this. A four times or even a three times on the M416 and a red dot on my barrel M762. The reason I like the three on the M416 is it's a lot nicer to switch for full auto between a three times and a four times. Now I can hear someone coming over here. I think this is a bot. I think this is a bot. Yeah, it goes over there and starts moving the crate. But again, aggressive play. We get eight kills, and that doesn't really count, but whatever. And I check Kingston is uh, watching me. Excellent. Um, I don't know if you guys do that. If you do something cool, and then you check to see if anyone's watching you, because <laughs> I am 12, and you're going to see me be 12 a whole lot. I mean, I've got a healthy sense of self-esteem, self -esteem, but still, I like, I like to know that people are watching me. I, I like to be on display. I'm like a peacock. Just my feathers glistening in the morning sun. Are you looking at me? Am I special yet, mum? Oh, onwards and upwards. Now, plenty of people left alive. Still 50 people left, and we've got eight kills. So, going by that maths, if we get all the way through this and win this thing, we can get up to, you know, 16 kills. But, can we up the ratio on that? We want to come out of boot camp as top dogs with a whole lot more damage. I haven't even really had a chance yet to look at the map. There's been no need. Boot camp has provided ample opportunity to get stuck in and have a good time. And... It is going to remain so for quite a while yet. There are no gunfire footsteps, no sounds around me, but boot camp tends to be somewhere that does get rotated to quite regularly as the game progresses through, if it's still in the circle, because it's chock full of gear. Like, landing middle building and winning at boot camp means you pretty much get your... I mean, look at me. I've got a level 3 helmet, level 2 vest... Fully kitted barrel, fully kitted M416 with the suppressor, med kits. I'm, I am rocking. I've got a lot of grins, mollies, everything. And it's around about now, Funk Soul Brother, that we start to sense that there could be a disturbance in the force somewhere nearby. And we go and have a little look. So, shuffling through, I think of running the QBU. And you're going to see something very interesting here. As soon as I go and check out... Uh, the, hear that? Hear the car? I hear a car rolling up. I don't know how many people are getting out of that car. What I'm going to do is try and set up a kill here. Now, I'm, I'm in position before. There's a guy just moved down to the left, but I missed that. There's his mate. I get a, a hit marker on that, but I don't get the kill. And there's another guy on the right. So that's three. Minimum of three. I send a, a grin in here. So if someone does try and push through, they're going to cop a little bit of love. Send a grin over there just to make them think. They don't know where they're going, but they know there's grins going off. And then I go back here and I change from the M416, uh, back to the M416 from the QBU because I figure in a squad fight, I am far better off having two automatic weapons than one QBU that's a lovely sniper rifle, but won't really get the job done. And that is when I hear someone moving around over here as well. Now this, unfortunately, I believe... No, actually, that's a person... That one's a person, but there is a bot that turns up in a second and nearly throws me, uh, where it's not actually a, uh, a human, it's a bot. So I can hear more. Oh, hang on, there he is. Get a nice look at the pro lean there. And now we're going to line up one of these Grenados, let the Gren cook lightly in a lovely birthday sauce, and just let that one go there. Now I can hear footsteps over here as well. So I'm going to let one go in there. Check the Kingston is still watching, so he can uh, <laughs> he can witness my greatness. Witness me! Witness! Witness! I am the Knight Rider, and I'm going to roll back again. Again, the repositioning that goes on constantly. It's like a, a nervous tick. I cannot deal with staying in the one place for too long. There we go, and we get a look. There's a guy on the left. I don't see him in the game, but I can hear that there is activity banging on back here. 
That's another squad. That's got to be another squad. So I line up for a grin. There is a bot. Now that is the bot. And I actually leverage this bot. So they're going to hit that bot. They're shooting at the bot. That's great. No worries. There's an M24. Someone's wrecked someone with an M24. There's our man. Now, we pretend to be a bot because he's just seen a bot, right? So he's thinking there must be a bot there. Here he comes. Oh, he takes a big hit. Takes a big hit. But he keeps getting up. He's going to poke it. And we'll reset our position and come back from the strafe. We knock out bot Asta, who's just cleared someone not long ago. And we put a molly in there. Now, I'm going to go through the little ramp here so that I'm down under the guns and start pushing into them. I don't know how many are here. And this is where my iPad, my fingers actually get really greasy on the iPad. See how I can't move my fingers? And this is why you love running the M416 instead. Because the M416, 100% saved my bacon there rather than having the QB you want. And we're up to 13 kills. We've taken out another human. And we're looking to do the goods. 24 left alive, 13 on the board. And we're feeling pretty spry, pretty good. We've got our pick of the loot. And still and all, um, we're short on 7.62. Now, I should have... I've got way too much 5.56 there. And uh, unfortunately... Uh, I don't need that sniper suppressor. I get rid of that. Hurts me to, to drop the sniper suppressor. Absolutely hurts me. And I decide that I'm just going to run on with uh, the four, the three, and the red dot. That's fine. And I hear some footsteps outside. In a second, I hear some footsteps outside. And I'm feeling pretty good here because it's been a nice drop for boot camp. Lots of aggression, lots of action. Here we go. Someone just jumped out there. And we're very thirsty today. Very thirsty. Very, very thirsty. And that's SLX Fiji. Uh, he goes down and his amigo is here somewhere. Now, what I do here, I know that they all think I'm here. Now, this is a little bit dodgy, a little bit dicey, but I don't know how many there are. There's at least two. I'm a little bit worried. So I completely retreat out of there. I completely retreat. I know they're pushing me. Uh, they've probably just seen me thirst. They're made up. They, they're ready for blood. So what I do is pull all the way back here. There he goes. They go to the, uh, get the box. And then we try and... Whoa, 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 whoa. So someone is absolutely belting in here. Someone coming up. That's a box. Thanks very much for turning up, buddy. That's lovely. So 15 kills. There's one knocked out the back already. And I've run out of 7.62 because I'm such a thirsty grub. His mate has to have got him up, right? So what we're going to do is chuck more grins down there. Gren, 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 gren. Just pepper them. We're probably too late to stop the revive, and they've probably moved to the next room. The problem with these greens is they're going to go long. If they are up close to the wall, it's unlikely that it's going to be close enough to get the kill on them. So I'm going to drop one right at the edge there where I saw a little bit of movement. Lo and behold, it certainly hit them, and it's moved them out to the next room. Lovely. Now I can hear someone bandaging there. They're low. They're low on resources. That makes me think I've got to push. I've got to push this thing. His buddy changes rooms. Going to thirst him up. Jeez, I'm thirsty today, boys and girls. 16 kills, 17 to go. And here we are. We're in it for all the chocolate rations. We're out of 762. We've got to get this going on. We both strafe backwards and forward, and that's six equal we take, take out there. So we saw six Fiji, and we get six equal there. That was definitely the last part of his squad. 17 kills, 16 left alive, and the circlers finally said it's time to bid adieu to boot camp. But I'm not happy with this because I am dead set low on 7.62 and I need to get my barrel on. I need to get my barrel on. It's then I see the compensator. Yes, please. I'll take that. You got any 7.62, buddy? Yes, give me all your 7.62. All your hugs and kisses too. And we're pushing out a boot camp. Not before we find whatever's in these boxes. Now, something I do a lot of is overboost. Like even when I'm full, I'll boost. And uh, it's for situations like that that I really do it. Just in case I am in a gunfight and I need to boost and uh, and you're going to see that come into play in a, in a little wee while as well. So we got 17 kills, 16 left alive and although I thought I was a shot at getting a big number, uh, much higher than the 20s, by the time I get across the other side of the road, other side of the river, uh, the numbers have dipped drastically and there's a fine line between being too aggressive and being too passive. When I'm in boot camp, I feel pretty confident running around because there are so many different angles you can take and the buildings and the elevation and the different 
uh, the doors and and actually being able to track footsteps and and it's almost like it's my private playground when I'm feeling confident. You know how it is. Like you're running around a boot camp, you're feeling like you've got it going on. So that's one thing. But moving out in the open country as Sanok versus squads where there's only really ridge lines and rocks, that's a different kettle of fish altogether. And that's that's when I uh, I shut up shop and I go a little bit more passive here than I probably should have. Still at all, uh, we've done pretty well so far. Like I, if, I, if this was my, if I got to 15th place and died every day of the week after getting 17 kills, yeah, I'd be pretty happy. Especially considering that a lot of them were good examples of FPP play, like strafing, pre-firing, good grends, constantly changing position, listening, uh, adjusting loadouts, all that kind of stuff. And this is just like the Game Sense video that I just did. This is where you really enjoy it, where you start looking at the kill feed and figuring out who's doing what to who, maybe picking up on uh, who's got squad mates and what direction that the kill feed is telling you stuff's going on from when you see... Like, for instance, I can't hear anything, but I know that there's AKMs and M416s killing people. I've cleared boot camp, and if they were happening up the top of the mountain or or something, that's one thing, but they, they can't be anywhere near me or on my left, those guys who are clearing. So the... The contact is probably running in from Paradise Resort. That's why I'm looking towards the northeast here. Because the kill feed is telling me that it's very active and it's getting it's getting done with ARs, which is like, well, unless they're all firing suppressed M416s, I should be hearing at least something here. And I'm not. Which makes me feel fairly secure that the area to my south is safe and that all the trouble is going to come in from the northeast. Now, this is this is never something that you take for granted. And you can see I'm still going to keep an eye on the back door. And this is one of the reasons why I say, like, you can see it's dropped down to only 10 left alive. So there's only nine possible kills on the board now. And I just got to be happy with that because unless the dice roll your way and you get more engagements and more engagements coming right to you, pushing it in this position is probably just silly. Uh, you're facing full squads. They are absolutely prepped for bear. They've all geared up and are ready to go now. And... Look, I'm on the edge of the zone line. Any push in here is going to be negating any chance I've got at gatekeeping someone who is still coming in across the river. So I'm very aware. I'm very conscious of what I'm doing here. I really want to get to those houses that are just to my north east, northwest here. Uh, but at the same time, I want to make sure that I don't run in while I'm under the gun of anyone else. So I wait long enough there. I do my due diligence. I know that there's someone fighting in, in the north. That's fine. Let's just see what's on offer in these hussy enders. Now, loadout wise, we're pretty happy days. Uh, we've got plenty of 762, we've got plenty of 556, we've got plenty of med kits. I'm going to bust an adrenaline shot out. Now, I get people all the time telling me, man, why are you wasting pills and adrenaline? I want you to tell me at the end of this video if I have no pills, adrenalines, and Red Bulls left. And I'm telling you right now, I will always have them because. The reason I use them is they're spare. And if I get gangbanged out of the blue, if someone gets the drop on me right now and I don't have time to get a heal off, that extra couple of ticks of hit points that it brings up could literally be the difference between me winning a gunfight and losing a gunfight. So stick around anyway. I am, for some reason, hitting the prone button here instead of the crouch button, and I do it multiple times. And it's frustrating me just as much as it's frustrating you. <laughs> I know that that high ground there is very popular. And I do see someone up the top moving across. But I don't really get a solid beat on them. I just saw a level 3 helmet bouncing along the top there. So I'm very, very aware of that. Uh, but because the, the actual rooftop here overhangs the window, it's hard to get a view up without exposing yourself a lot. It's very hard to move quickly left to right when you are crouched and prone. Now I can see someone running up here. I wait until he clears the rock so that I've got a good chance of getting a kill as he goes up the hill. And we do hit with a lot of shots. Like those last seconds, as uh, milliseconds as he's running into that rock, must have been very, very close. And I, I'm thinking if that's a squad and they're not out of the water yet, there's got to be someone coming in behind him. And if they come in from there behind, they're going to be very, very low, right? There, there, there won't be much left of them. Because swimming across there in the blue, you're going to take damage. Now, I'm also aware that there's people pushing up towards my position. I hear that in just a second. 
And I'm going to switch that up. Here he is, coming out of the water. Just on the right of screen there, you can see someone coming in. And as expected, yeah, he was absolutely down on his luck. Choco Takok. Uh, and there's someone pushing up here. There we go. So we thirst him up. The bloke on the far side is pushing in. I don't know if they're different squads, but I can tell you right now that I don't clear either of those guys. So I've got two behind that rock. There's at least one other in front of me. I'm getting tags over there, but I'm outside the zone. So instead of muck around, I'm going to push back out the way I came, get some smokes out, and then try and get up this hill very, very cannily because there's no real cover for me. And I don't want to go straight up the hill and end up between that squad that I've got behind the rock pinned down there and the guys that I just thirsted up in front of me. So only six left alive. At least two of them are down by the water's edge. And I'm thinking, I don't know if it's a solo up here. I saw a level three helmet earlier. Could have been the guy that I just killed there on the steps. If he's got one mate left and then at least two down there, that's three, four. I'm only missing two, one. The numbers are looking good. Like, I'm hoping to have two separate engagements of no more than two. Here he is. Now, there's at least another one up there. This is really weird. I don't know where the hell they are. Um, let's get some Grens going up here. Pumping them, pumping them. Lots of uh, freewheeling grenades you might notice in my gameplay these days. I found them to be incredibly effective. Now... There was gunfire. So that was the squad mate. And this is why you watch the kill feed of the guy that I knocked up here. That means that there's three coming up from down the bottom. Or at least I expect there's three. There's a guy over there. I don't know where he's gone, but he was certainly running around. And I'm going to double back again, reposition, and go to the far eastern side of this roadway and look for targets of opportunity. Because he's probably told his squad mates that I'm up here. Oh, hello. There's one. There's two. Oh man, right about now, getting very sweaty palms. This is a big number. Uh, 19 kills, like that 20 kills. Three left alive, one of them's knocked. There is literally just me versus one other dude. And I know that they know what they're doing because that guy was crawling towards me to mark out exactly where I was for his amigo. Now, I told you this is gonna be tense. It gets tense all the way through. <laughs> And I also told you that there'd be some issues. There's going to be some issues. I don't know where this last guy is. And I make a big mistake here. I have got a little bit of boost left. Not a lot. Okay? Not a lot. And I actually take damage running through that blue. Here comes the last guy. Are you ready for this? This is going to break my heart. We're going to watch that again in slow-mo, and you'll see exactly why <laughs> it broke my heart. There's uh, your MVP of the team, Bushka. That is a 22-minute game on Sanok with 3.5k damage, which is a fair amount. 21 kills, 237 health restored. I'm going to slow down that last bit, and you can just go out watching me die a thousand desyncs deaths. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Bushka. Look after yourself as we hit him once. Twice, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, desync. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Bye for now.